So I had about 15 and a half of you guys who told me to put Gideon Blackblade into Gideon's Tribal, and today we are doing just that. Now, I've been wanting to play this deck for a while. There's a bunch of different ways you can build it in different color combinations, black, white, blue, white, red, white, green, white. And obviously for today, we are going green, white. Me being a Celestia loyalist, obviously I'm going to default to green, white. So I hope you guys enjoy. And keep in mind, if you wanted to pick up today's deck and also support the channel, you can get the deck from tcgplayer.com by clicking the deck list link down below and also before we get started as usual thank you very much to all my patrons y'all are the reason this channel gets to keep on going and if you'd like to support the channel as well patreon is the best place to do so and with that let's get right into the deck tech hope you enjoy This video is sponsored by MTGOnlineStore.com. For the latest and greatest of MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, head on over to MTGOnlineStore.com and use promo code MARIN for 15% off your next order, and it also supports the show. Link is down below. This deck is going to have a lot of similarities to the Green White Rish Cars deck we played a year ago on the channel. So like out of all the Planeswalker tribes you can do, Gideon's is probably the most viable. So we're going to try it in Green White this time just for the efficient ramp. Starting off with our three drop walkers, we got Gideon Blackblade, brand new out of War of the Spark. I'm surprised that this card is not seeing play in Modern. It's pretty decent. It's a 3 mana 4-4 four, four indestructible. What's so bad about that? And it's plus one I thought could uh, target himself, but it can't. But it can target our other Gideons, and all our Gideons can turn into creatures. So it works well alongside other Gideons. His minus six can also exile a non-land permanent just in case we're having trouble with like a detention sphere or an opposing fairy or something. And then we got Gideon of the Trials, which is good protection because it can prevent all the damage something would deal until our next turn. It could give us an emblem so that we don't lose a game as long as we have a Gideon on the battlefield, which is going to be pretty decent to help us beat combo decks because uh, being a green-white dirtily deck such as this, uh, we don't really have a lot of interaction for combo. So Gideon's uh, Gideon of the Trials emblem is going to be very important in a lot of matchups. He can also turn into a 4-4 that is indestructible, which is relevant. Onto our four drop walkers, Gideon Ally of Zendikar is there to spit out a bunch of knight tokens. So he is really good for producing a board state for us, and he can also turn into a 5-5 indestructible. So this dude clocks the opponent really hardcore and beats them down really efficiently. And then we got Gideon Champion of Justice, which is notoriously the worst Gideon, um, but we're using him because of the fact that he can turn into a really huge creature. So he is the Gideon that gets the most loyalty counters because he plus ones to put additional loyalty counters on himself equal to the number of creatures target opponent controls. And you pair this alongside Gideon Jura, which we'll get to in a second, you can just get a bunch of loyalty counters on Gideon Champion of Justice. But then his zero ability, he turns into a creature that's indestructible with power and toughness equals to the number of loyalty counters on him. So he's likely gonna be like a seven, seven or an eight, eight most of the time. And that with indestructible is just a very potent threat. And finally, we got Gideon Jura as our final Gideon in the deck. So his plus two makes all creatures target opponent controls attack Gideon Jura if able. So that draws all the aggro away from both our face and our other Gideons. And he's so beefy because he plus twos goes up to eight right away. And then he can start ticking down to destroy tap creatures that they did deal damage with. Gideon Jura particularly pairs very, very, very well with Gideon of the Trials because Gideon of the Trials prevents the damage that a permanent would deal. And then, then they're just going to be attacking Gideon Jura for zero. And then Gideon Jura can just tick down to kill that creature. So they are best friends. Those two Gideons are best friends. But then at this slot, we also put Rishkar's expertise because all of our Gideons can turn into really beefy creatures. So Rishkar's expertise particularly pairs well with them because we draw cards equal to their power and then we cast another Gideon for free. And uh, yeah, Gideon the Champion of Justice is a good one to pair along with this because it's probably going to be our biggest Gideon. Uh, Gideon Jura also turns into a 6-6, but this is also good for helping us aggressively loot into a Wrath of God if we need it. Because if we need to blow up the board, all of our Gideons, except Gideon Jura, are indestructible. So we're digging for a Wrath, but we also want to start attacking. Uh, Rishkar's Expertise is a good one to pair alongside Gideons. And onto our non-Gideon creatures, we got Garrick Primal Hunter. It can spit out a board state for us, but most importantly, it minus threes to draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures we control. And obviously, our Gideons have really good power. This is also a good one to hit for free off of Rishkar's expertise and draw even more cards. And then Elspeth Sun's Champion, just because it is a house, it is a mansion. This thing just produces a huge board state. Pretty much Elspeth Sun's Champion feels unbeatable for any mid-range deck. It is absolutely insane. It is also a wrath on a stick if we need that. 
And on to removal, we got Wrath and Path, a uh, good old removal package. Path to Exile is our spot removal and Wrath, just because um, our threats are Planeswalker based, so we want to just be able to Wrath the board and our Planeswalkers get to keep on living. So that is the dream. And on to our ramp, I could go on about this ramp package for hours, but I'll try to keep it brief. So this is what I call safe ramp. So this is a deck where we want our ramp guaranteed. We do not want to miss our land drops. We do not want to miss our ramp because we want to get our planeswalkers out on time. So if we were to play things like Arbor Elf to pair with this Utopia Sprawl or Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarch, whatever, they die to a removal spell then our Gideons are stuck in hand. We cannot do what our deck wants to do, and we are screwed if our ramp dies. So we need to guarantee our ramp and make sure our ramp does not die to removal. So Utopia Sprawl is there to Enchanted Forest, gives us a free mana. Farseek and Segura Tribe Elder fetch lands. So these are um, ramp ways that don't die to our own wraths and don't die to our opponent's removal, so we can guarantee to get out our stuff. We got a total of 22 lands, which should be fine, paired alongside our 12 ram spells. We got a couple of horizon canopies to crack, and we do have one stomping grounds because we are splashing blood moon in the sideboard so that we have a way to beat Tron, because Tron is very difficult for a deck like this, because we aren't particularly fast. We're not slow, but we just need to buy a little bit of time, so blood moon should help out with that. We also got a couple copies of defense grid to make it so that the opponents cannot counter our spells, just in case we're going up against control decks that have a lot of negates and cryptic commands. Defense Grid just says no. Got a place out of Rest in Peace to grind out against the Dredge decks because those are going to be really annoying. Also the Phoenix decks as well. After we Wrath, we don't want them to recur their stuff. Then got three copies of Stony Silence uh, just because we want to shut down the things like Wurr and Affinity because they are pretty scary and pretty quick. And then two copies of Choke to make Islands not able to untap. This is really good for grinding out against things like Blue Eye Control and Just Guy Control. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. And before we get into the gameplay, you know what time it is. It's time to welcome a brand new patron to the family, Adrian S. Thank you very much for your tier one patronage. I really appreciate it. And welcome to the Marination. And with that, let's get right into the gameplay. Yo, what up guys? Post-production Marin here with your typical per video speed up session. Usually we speed up the longest game in the video and this was the longest game. Now as usual, I apologize for speeding up the very first game in the video. That doesn't really happen too often, but this is one of those rare cases where it actually happened. But I'm sure y'all don't mind. So we end up going up against a deck that starts on Mountain into Monastery Swiss Spear, so we could assume they're burned, but also since it was just the basic Mountain, that means it could be any number of things like Blue Red, uh, just Prime always blue red wizards or some kind of black red something um but they end up being mono red phoenix they end up hard casting a phoenix they didn't get it back from the graveyard like they usually do uh so they have to attack gideon jura here and here's where they're stumbling trying to figure out what to do because they don't know how to play against gideon jura and they don't know that they're supposed to attack all at it gideon champion of justice can tick up here for eight and then we draw rich cards expertise to be able to draw eight cards and cast a free um Gideon Blackblade to give Gideon Champion of Justice lifelink to get a lifelink in there, and then Gideon of the Trials comes down and makes an emblem so that we cannot lose the game as long as we have a Gideon in play, and that is enough to make our opponent concede, and I completely understand that. I would concede as well if that I were in their position. So we go into the next game. We don't have any changes to the sideboard, but they bring in Blood Moon. Now, I'm weirded out as to why they brought in Blood Moon because uh, they would literally have to make cuts from their deck because everything that they play in their deck benefits themselves and is not really interactive. So they literally made actual cuts to bring in Blood Moon against us. It actually got there for some reason, but I don't know why they brought it in because the first game, we literally had like Sakura Tribe Elders, Far Seeks, like Utopia Sprawls on two of our forests. So the very odd decision from our opponent, but uh, luckily it got there for them and we didn't draw second planes. Uh, if we did happen to draw second planes, though, we would have totally destroyed them. Going to the next game, a uh, pretty regular start. We get to get out a Gideon of the Trials pretty early on, and we shut down that Monastery Swift Spear, but they're fortunately able to bolt plus gutshot our Gideon to kill it. Um, but we just get an ally Zendikar and start making allies out. If they want to attack it with the Phoenix, it gets to live on one. Uh, they fork bolt it to finish it off, but we have the backup and uh, path their Phoenix so that they cannot get it back. Else Best Sun's Champion is able to just come out if we wanted to, but we decided to just keep going with ally Zendikar because it closes the game out a lot quicker and they have not a lot left that they can do um, and then at this point they know they're dead they have to kill both of our allies to survive and they cannot do it so we got there but GG's to Mono Red Phoenix it's a really cool deck got a game here against Goblin Aggro and we are on the play and yes we'll play first Utopia Sprawl in the Gideon or Farseek in the Gideon I will take that 
So let's go ahead and keep his hand. Start on Winslow Heath, crack it. Grab a basic forest and put a Utopia Sprawl on it, naming white. All right, Mountain. Is it goblins? Are they actually goblin aggro? Staying true to their name. All right, place a current tribe elder. Taps Temple Garden. So we can play Gideon, Jura, or Gideon of the Trials next turn. I think I want to start on Gideon, um, Ally of Zendikar. Because, you know, it wins quicker. Burning Tree Emissary and a Bushwhacker, I assume. That is a bushwhacker. Part of me wants to just trade with the bushwhacker. Yeah, I think I'm actually trading with the bushwhacker here. Because I can still play ally as Zendikar. Alright, play ally. Make a blocker. I gotta draw a land for Gideon Jura. And then uh, Rishkar's expertise off of one of these Gideons is gonna be pretty thick. They make Gideon look drastically different in each set. Alright, Double Founder Street Denizen. Alright, create, create another thing. Let's far seek. I'm not expecting them to have main board Blood Moon, so just pass. We'll see if they have Devastating Summons Bushwhacker at the ready once they draw their third land. They could. Aidwhack nowadays runs like two devastating summons. Alright, they're pumping the dorks. I will block those dorks. So Gideon Jura coming down is just going to be the end of them, really. Okay, they're uh they're they're trying to kill Gideon Ally Zendikar. Alright, I see you. They're going all at Gideon Ally Zendikar. I will block a Foundry Street Denizen. All right, play a tapped land. Let's throw out Gideon Jura, which could die, so this could be a mistake, but we'll see. So tick up on them. If they have a Bushwhacker, they can kill Gideon Jura. But if they don't have a Bushwhacker, Gideon Jura gets to live. If it's just like a Legion Loyalist or something, Gideon Jura gets to live. I hope they forget about his ability and just like devastating summons here. That'd be hilarious. But two three threes would be annoying here since uh, Ally Zendikar makes two twos. And they got Bushwhacker, so they're killing Gideon. But they wasted the Bushwhacker. That is a Bushwhacker that is not going at our face. Yep. Gotta go in with everything, opponent. Gotta go in with everything. There we go. Opponent knows how to play against Gideon Jura. Can I get a Wrath? There is a Wrath. So let's Wrath. Good start. So now they're down to two cards left in hand. Let's see what they can do with those two cards. Pass a turn. Goblin Guide, alright. And a Bushwhacker. That puts us down to 9.
We got a Gideon Champion of Justice on top. I think I'm definitely going Ally as Zendikar, though, since it does put out a blocker. And then next turn, we can turn him into a 5-5 and just Rish cars. As long as opponent doesn't have anything to go wide and kill Gideon again. So I think this is the turn to do it. And then, and then, we can find a Black Blade to give Life Link, perhaps, or Allies Enikar are, are getting the trials to find a. to get an emblem. Path to Exile on top. Alright, let's trade with uh, the Reckless Bushwhacker. Goblin Guide's giving us value, so I'll take that. Going to seven. So they're trying to finish this off with Bolt plus Goblin Grenade. Ooh, Light of the Stage. Why is everybody running that? And Legion Loyalist. So tick up Gideon, turn him into a five into a five five. And now we are going to Rich Cars Expertise. Draw five cards. Play a free five drop or less. Let's play Champion of Justice. Tick up Champion of Justice for two. Play a basic planes to leave a path. And let's get in for five. Legion Lois comes in. Do they have Bushwhacker? They do have a Bushwhacker, but they don't have exactly lethal. If they have a Bolt, they have lethal. We are one off of lethal, lethal on the backswing. Yep, this creature's getting first strike. Reveal the top card, and it is a Plains. It's Path the Goblin Guide because it's the biggest. Puts us to one. They have a Bolt. They don't have a Bolt. So let's Wrath... Play a chump blocker. And tick up Gideon. Yo, what's up, Zero Dame? Turn Gideon into a 6-6. Six, six. So put them to 1. So we're both... One of us is going to die here. One of us is going to die here. Either they get the top deck. In which case, congrats to our opponent for getting the top deck. Or we got it. Let's see. Oh, no, they have the Ramanop ruins. Yeah, they have the Ramanop. All right, GG. Right on the nose. That's the tech land for you. It always gets there. Uh, I think I'm going to run it back just the same. They have lethal in play. Yeah, the Ramanop. Yes, I would like to play first, and this hand I will keep because I go turn two Farzik and a turn three Wrath. I'm not going to play around Blood Moon. I know Goblins doesn't play Blood Moon. I've seen it in the board of, of Goblins before, but I'm not expecting it. Yeah, what's up, uh, Palace Palacios? How you doing? Got a little bit of allergies at the moment. I know the YouTube comment section is going to freak out about it because the YouTube comment section hates when I have allergies. They always comment so many rude things in the comments about it. But I still want I still want to you know hit my uploads. I don't want to miss my uploads. So doing what I got to do to keep the uploads going. So I, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are watching on YouTube who appreciate that. But I know a lot of people like to leave rude comments about me sniffling and stuff, so. But I'm still making the best of it and taking the stream on anyways, so I guess I'm doing fine. So thanks for asking, Palacios. How are you doing? So 
so he got a goblin token left over from the Mogwar Marshal dying. I will Wrath again here, because I know I'm going to have to. And then i got to find a Gideon to pair with this Rishkars. Yeah, probably like half half the comments that people leave on YouTube are negative about like any content creator ever. But there's the ones that make it worth it out there. There's the good ones. Horizon Canopy, I will crack. I guess I will Wrath here, because every, every bit of health counts. So I know the opponent was just holding back there so that they can go, like, devastating someone's Bushwhacker or, you know, play a couple more things plus a Bushwhacker. <laughs> exactly, Zero Dame. You sniff like a normal human being? A uh, human being? Intolerable. I think it's because yesterday was EDH day. Oh, no, two days ago was EDH day. No, it was probably because of me leaving the window open. I just talked about it, but... It was probably that, or it could be just because one of the people I was playing EDH with was had allergies that day. It was two days ago. And, like, I, uh, you know, like, shuffled his deck, cut his deck, mind-controlled his cards, you know what I mean? So, touching his cards and stuff. Gotta be careful. I feel like if you have allergies, you should just stay home or else you're going to spread it to other people. Have you ever seen that episode of Mythbusters where they test, like, allergies? Like, how, how easily it spreads when you're sick? It's crazy. It's crazy how easily the allergies spread. So that's why you have to, like, use hand sanitizer and, you know, like, use hand sanitizer after touching anything like a table, a doorknob, the toilet flusher, the sink faucet. All right, I'll save my damage. Go ahead and path it. You gotta do everything to prevent getting a cold. That's why whenever somebody I'm around, somebody who lives where I live is sick, I make sure that I wash my hands after touching the doorknob and to open a doorknob, I use a napkin. Is your Tron opponent considered a doorknob? Probably. All right, we're getting a little bit flooded here, so we're gonna need to draw Gideon to pair with this Rich Cars to refuel. We got 12 Gideons in the deck, two Garricks and an Elspeth. So, got 15 Walkers to draw into, and let's see if we can actually get one off the top. So, we got 45 cards in the library, so literally one third is Planeswalkers. So, we have a one in three chance to top deck a Planeswalker, so let's hope to get one. And if I got one, I would like it to be probably Gideon Jura or Elspeth Suns Champion. Those would be pretty good. Although, Gideon Jura would pair better with the Rishkars. And we do have Gideon Jura on top. Opponent attacked and revealed it for us. So, Gideon Jura. Gonna have to take it up. Can't, uh, we don't have quite the mana for Rishkars until we untap. So, let's see if our Rishkars, or if our Gideon gets to live. Opponent does have a Ramanop Ruins. Gotta keep that in mind. Also, what we got to keep in mind is that Gideon Jura is our one Gideon that does not have Indestructible. So if we're going to get a Wrath off Rishkars, we got to save it. We do have another Rishkars off the top. So let's turn Gideon into a 6-6. Six -six. And let's Rishkars. Ooh, there's Gideon Blackblade. I like Gideon Blackblade. Let's cast that. Yo, what's up, Ivan Robinson? Thanks for the follow. Gideon Blackblade will give Gideon Juro lifelink. And now, we can go ahead and play a Plains. And fetch. This is exactly the play we did earlier. And play Gideon of the Trials and tick up. What are they doing here? They're gonna crack the Ramanop ruins, sure. So, 
We're going to 14. That could be potentially deadly if they do if they are saving devastating summons bushwhacker. So I'm gonna actually get an emblem here with this Gideon. They are bolting it in response, that is fine. Go to combat, attack with Gideon Jura, gain six life. And I have another Rishkar sitting in hand, as well as an Elspeth Sun's champion. So I feel pretty solid here. And they did have the Bushwhacker. They're going to have to kill both of our Gideons before they kill us, though, because we do got an emblem. And they did not have the dev Devastating Summons for eight. Elspeth Sun's champion is going to make them unable to attack us forever. We're going to have so many blockers. And then this Gideon emblem is just going to sit out here for eternity. And they are going to kill our walkers. They're not. They're going to keep Jura alive. Thank you. I wanted to keep that one. So, Sun's champion. Pick up Gideon Jura. So, force them to attack all of their dudes into Sun's champion. Uh, play land. Crack the land. Grab another basic forest. Gideon Champion of Justice is going to plus four here. And he's going to be quite the fat boy. So tick up for four. That Elspeth is so busted with the plus one. Yeah, it's nuts. Alright, they got a Bushwhacker. So they're going to be able to hit Gideon for at least two. And they have nothing else in hand. Did you grab your free unstable basics? Yes, I did. Thank you very much, Zero Dame, for the, the code last time. Come on, Pony, you gotta attack. Alright, let's trade off with a few of these dudes. They give us a free forest. Thank you, opponent. This is where we want to be. And opponent concedes. They know they're not going to beat the Gideon emblems. Alright, we're going to run it right back. But we're on the draw this time. So it's going to look a lot worse. So we have to hope they mulligan at least once or twice. And then just be able to stabilize. Oh, we don't have any lands. We're going to have to mulligan. If it literally had one land, I'd, I'd keep this because it'd go Utopia Sprawl into its current tribe elder into Wrath. But I have to mull. Oh boy. Uh oh. I gotta go to five. Alright, I'm keeping that. Horizon Canopy, that's too painful. I'm putting it on the bottom. Watch us top deck our second copy, though. Ramen up Ruins for a Goblin Guide. That would have been a free Horizon Canopy. Watch, them, watch us have a Horizon Canopy on the top, anyways. Got a Wrath of God on top. If I was a peace to leave a path. Founder Street Denizen. Goblin Guide reveals. A forest. Very cool. Fetch for a plains. Path. We're ramping them, but it's okay. Did you path guide for a denizen? I'm not quite sure I know what that means. Play a tap temple garden and pass. Oh, did I path guide or denizen? I path guide. Because it had haste. The denizen wasn't attacking us. Gotta save damage wherever you can against a deck like this. Double ramen up ruins is going to be very scary in the late game. So we're, we're at a virtual 13 life already because of those ramen up ruins. Ramen up ruins is busted. It got banned in standard for a good reason. Because just the fact that they play these lands that literally take up no extra slots in their deck... We're at a virtual 13 life. So that's why these, these lands are super good. Yeah, you're right, mismatch lands. 
It's the shame concede. Oh, they are going for bushwhack. Okay, you know what? That's a really good spot to do that because I actually cannot... Um, yeah, I, I cannot Wrath next turn. I didn't have a Utopia Sprawl. So this is likely going to get us here. Yeah, we're going to four. Two. Light of the Staggy. And uh, Mountain and Foundry Denizen. Elspeth. That ain't gonna do it. Alright, Devastating Summons got there. Such a good card. Such a good combo. It's very all-in, but you know what? It works. Alright. We almost got there against Goblins. Goblin aggro. Let's get another game and see if we can do some more. We are on the play here against Delve 3 with Green White Gideons, and yes, uh, we're going to keep that. That is a turn 3 Champion of Justice, although we don't know if it's going to do much in this matchup or not, but it can at least be a 5-5 Indestructible for 4, so it's got that going for it. Oh, don't be Storm. Don't want to be Storm. Don't want to go up against Storm. Please, no. Spire Bluff Canal tells me that they do not have Blood Moon in their deck, so I'm not going to fetch a basic. Thought Scour over Pyromancer. Yeah, they are Storm. They are Storm. They're classic Storm, though. So we're going to start beating down with Gideon and see if uh, they're just too slow. They got four turns to actually kill us, so that's quite a lot. Rich Cars is going to let us draw a billion cards, though, so hopefully we can find something good off of that. That Planes is your play, Matt? This one? That's cool. I like that Planes, but I, I think that it's, it's my least favorite of all the full art Planes, but it's still a good Planes. Because it's John Avon, and John Avon playing John Avon lands in general are good. All the four art, like the full art. This is John Avon as well. Like all the unstable, unhinged, all the unlands, and a lot of lands in general in Magic: The Gathering are John Avon lands. He's just, he's one of those painters that can just knock out paintings really quick, and like he can knock out a painting like this in literally like ten minutes. Kind of like Bob Ross does. Obviously, you go and remaster it around the edges and stuff, but... They killed Champion of Justice. How did they kill him? He was at five. Did they, like, gut shot him a couple times or something? Farseek. Sure, grab a stomping round. Farseek again, grab a planes. That looks so weird. That looks so weird with the with the this planes underneath that one. It's just like a gray blotch. Alright, Pyromancer Ascension does have two counters on it now. I swear, it should have said that if it had three or more counters on it. Like it's nuts that it says two. I'm just going to path their Phoenix now so that I can just F6 because I I don't want to keep clicking OK. I always get um, custom play mats. Like here's one of my custom play mats right here. I have it next to me so I'll show you. It is a bird and this bird says I am environmentally friendly. This is my birdie play mat. And um, the primary play mat I use is, uh, I'll show you, my backpack is right here. This is a play mat I always use because it's my favorite. This is my other custom play mat. This one right here. Because I'm a dang furry, so I have me and Shao and Zorark. For those who play Pokemon out there, you know me and Shao and Zorark. But yeah, that's just me being a dang furry. So, 
Utopia Sprawl. Unfortunately, we don't have any Gideon to pair with his Rishkars. That is something that happens with this deck. It's not actually common, but it does happen to where you actually have a Rishkars, but your opponent was able to deal with your Gideons. And that's when Rishkars is just a dud, so... They got double opt. Yep, I'm just going to F6. I'm not going to pretend like I have anything. Thanks, Drew. Mama Morphos. We're getting grape shotted this turn. What's their storm count? I'm sure it'll pop up on the screen. But I definitely need rest and peace in this matchup. And I do have a play set in the board. Um, I might as well just concede, because I know that I pretty much lost here. They don't have any rituals, though, do they not? So, I don't think they're, like... They might just be Phoenix. Yeah. Because I've seen I've, I've seen the Phoenix, like, Thing in the Ice run Pyromancer Ascension before, so... They might just be just traditional Phoenix, but just with Pyromancer Ascension, just to cast a bunch of spells. So, I don't think I have to fear a Grape Shot, but... We're still likely losing here. Oh yeah, we die. Because they copied up a bolt. Gutshot just to flex on us. Alright, on to sideboard. Bring in the playset of Rest in Peace. For sure. Cut Rish cars. Elspeth Sun's Champion actually doesn't do much here. And you know what? I, I actually like Rich cards better than Garrick, I think. So let's just go one and one. You'll never understand why Watsy keeps trying to buff Storm decks. Yeah, like, they buffed it and nerfed it at the same time. They brought Flusterstorm, but at the same time, Storm can also sideboard their own Flusterstorm, and they're not going to cast Graveshot until they draw it. So literally, Flusterstorm does nothing. So that's a dud. And then they also gave it a buff, because you know that new Storm card? The new backup Wincon Storm card enchantment? It's nuts. So Storm, like from Modern Horizons, Storm already got buffed. So, it's crazy. Got a lot of Gideons, but I think we're too slow to deal with them. They're going to be very quick. So I might want to mulligan and try to find... Yeah, I'm going to mulligan and try to find a Rest in Peace. That does not have a Rest in Peace, and I'm not going to 5. Gideon Blackblade, I will keep that on top. Oh man, that's a shame. That's a shame, because I have to fetch here, because I can't put Utopia Sprawl on Horizon Canopy. So, grab a forest, Utopia Sprawl for white. At least I can crack this canopy and try to find another Gideon. Modern Horizons 1 is very spicy. Yeah, it is. I like it a lot. Play Horizon Canopy and pass, and we're planning on cracking it. Thing in the ice, there it is. So, I'm not going to crack Canopy here. Yeah, I'm just going to Wrath, because after the turn after Phoenix untaps with Thing in the Ice, they're surely about to flip their Thing in the Ice. So, be smart, Wrath it now. I still have plenty to back it up. Just in case if anything happens. There is the Pyro Man. I mean, there's a Gideon, so let's let's play it. Try to do something with it. What? I don't know. But at least it's a 5-5 attacker with Indestructible. Ship the turn. Rathen for days. And path in their plays. Sir Visions is gonna get a counter on the Pyroman. I would bet money that they have two Manamorphoses to get another counter. I'm so salty that I sold my Manamorphoses. I had like eight of them. And they're gone. 
And now they're twenty dollars. I bought them for like four. All right, we'll attack for five. See if we can do something. I'm gonna craft this canopy now. See if there's any reason why I shouldn't attack. Well, I might as well crack this canopy again right now to make sure, or to see if I draw like a Far Seeker, a Sakura Child Elder that I just want to cast. Yep, exactly a Far Seek. Well, opponent, you got three turns. You got plenty of time. What you got? Also, where's my rest in pieces? I have a playset. There's a playset in the deck. Let me draw one. Yep, there's Metamorphos number one, and I bet I bet it virtual money that they have a second one. Come on, dude, you know what you're doing. You're a storm player. But then again, you're a storm player, so maybe they don't. Cause I've met a lot of people who say, I'm new to Modern, this is my first game of Modern, and they're literally playing Storm. And I'm like, dude, you should, you know, play play some different decks for a while until you get into Storm, because you're going to do a lot of misplays. Um, Alright. Well, they're not doing anything, so... Go tagging. For five. Play Forest... Toby's brawl and white. Yeah, but no, 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 dude. Elves is way more complicated than you think it is. At least the kind of elves that, uh... Oh, sure, you can do that. The kind of elves that, that I used to play with Cord, like, tech, like, Abzan, like, green, or just pretty much elves splashing black for two Shaman of the Packs with cord for a bunch of white options there's actually so many lines of play you can do it's kind of ridiculous like back in the day elves but nowadays it's pretty easy you know, so nowadays elves I guess you could say it's pretty easy elves is just like chancellor or that new chancellor clan caller elvish clan caller and you just literally just beat down and just attack 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 but it elves used to not be like that back in the day elves was very complicated Oh yeah, you can search a least track my far seek. I'm okay with that. They get to see our two wraths in hand. You know what? Maybe this Gideon might actually get there. They're down to two cards left in hand and they're doing nothing. I wonder what they're doing. Like what is in their hand? It's like turn seven and they haven't killed us. Alright, they're getting their second counter on Pyromancer Ascension, so now their spells start to copy. They are bolting Gideon. Do they have Gutshot? Oh, they have Phoenix. Gideon's gonna die, but at least we can Wrath. And they're down to one card left. Gideon of the Trials is nice. I'm actually going to tick up Gideon because I don't want it to be in range. I don't want it to be in range of a... Uh, Arc Light Phoenix attack. What happens when people tell modern newbies to start in Storm because it's cheap and decent? I mean, yeah, I guess it's cheap. Oh, there's a rip. Please resolve. 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 Come on, no negates. Thank you! Alright, now I feel okay. Gideon, can you turn into a 4-4 four, four for me, big boy, please? And get in there. Get him down to 3. Got one more turn. One more turn. What do you have in this last turn? Back in the day, magic was different arguments, but elves, dude, elves was not an easy deck. It had the illusion of being an easy deck, but in reality, it was kind of just like... Like, in reality, it, it was there was like a lot of lines of play you can do. 
that a noob would not think of. But like I said, right now there's no cord. It's just literally Coco for beatdowns. So it's a very, I would say it's a weak deck to like control in mid range. It can race combo, it can race opposing aggro decks. That's the strong suit. So if you're going to like a GP or FNM, you can easily get at least the neutral record, if not like a three in one. But with elves, I don't think you have a really good chance of going undefeated. Because there's going to be that one deck that just ruins your day. That has like Anger of the Gods and like Bolt Path Push Helix, Snapcast Helix, and then you're just going to be dead. Mama Morphos, but they don't have Pyromancer Recession anymore. Rest in peace, counter that. They cannot, they can no longer reanimate Phoenixes. And I kind of don't want to play Utopia Sprawls. Oh, you know what? I can. I was going to say I don't want to play Utopia Sprawls because I don't want to be countered by uh, Spell Pierce, but we're not losing any mana by playing Utopia Sprawls. What are they going for? You, sm you played a Smothering Tide deck in GP London, somehow kept beating Dredge. Oh, you play the smothering the the greedy wheels. It's because they don't expect it. Dredge actually has no interaction with that whatsoever. They can't really interact with you. The smothering tithe just like you play it, then you wheel. Did you add some more consistent ways to wrap into it? I bet they were salty from losing to a brew. I know there's like a whole legion of types of magic players out there who get really salty when they lose to a brew. Well, those brewers rejoice in that. They rejoice in making people salty losing to a brew. All right, well, Utopia Sprawl on a forest. Name white, tap, Utopia Sprawl on a forest. Name white, Gideon. Tick up Gideon on Thing in the Ice. Pass the turn, alright opponent. Gotta kill Gideon here. Opponent knows we got a Wrath in hand, so I'm just gonna F6. I'm not about to fetch this fetch, I gotta... Preserve my life total. I have no reason to fetch this fetch right now. I can play anything in my deck with this mana. And I don't believe in thinning. I don't believe in deck thinning. I believe in it when it's absolutely necessary, like when it's the last resort, but I usually don't do it unless I really need a fetch. Life total is relevant. That's what I'm a believer of. I believe that life total is relevant and that that's why gaining life is one of my favorite things to do in Magic is because I know that the life total is relevant and that gaining life can swing the game around just as easily as you were down in the game. You can just be up on it. Because all it does is buy you the time to stabilize. And sometimes with your deck, what you need to do is you need to stabilize because it may be weak in the early game but strong in the late game. So gaining life is relevant. You didn't put more ramp, but you added waste not alternative. Oh, that could be pretty. That could be pretty time consuming, because you have so many triggers. But I, I could see that zero day. But I, I, if I were you, I would put a little bit of ramp in there, because you got to get to smothering time quick. Like I, I remember you have prophetic prism, and that's like it, right? Just prophetic prism. I have six. I don't know what's going on. I'm pressing F6 again. I get a Wrath here, so I gotta find something. They're down to six cards left in their library. Look at that. Alright, well, I'm about to Wrath. Let's 
see if they got another echoing truth. They're going to copy up a bolt and bolt Gideon to death. Alright, well that buys them some time. Oh, they're bolting us. Wait, why'd they do that? That lets us activate Gideon. Oh, they're gonna gut shot. Okay. One at Gideon, one at us. Alright, that's fair. They're gonna need some good uh, aggro, because they got six cards left in their library, five cards in hand, so... They can pull it off. They can still pull this off. We're at nine. Like, they can literally just bolt us twice for the win. Yep, we're down to six. Do they have... We're down to three. They got another bolt. And the hard-casted Phoenix will do it. So GG to Blue Red Phoenix. They got there. We were able to beat Mono Red Phoenix, but it is Blue Red Phoenix that is the real menace. Yo, post-production Marin here once again with a quick side note. Uh, I know this video was only three matches long, but they were very long games. I would have fit in more matches if I could have, but then the video would have been over an hour long. And I like to have my videos under an hour long nowadays just to satisfy the general YouTube audience. I know that uh, there's a lot of you guys who like to see a lot of games out there. So if you wanted to see all the games we had with this deck, you can click the Twitch link down below in the description and go to the video section of the page to watch the VOD. Um, so that's what I recommend doing if you'd like to see more games. So we're going to wrap it up right here. So green-white Gideons did not do the best. It loses to the decks that are competitive in the meta right now. So I think if you're going to play uh, Gideons, it is best to put it in black-white and uh, go more cheaper, low to the ground. Maybe the maximum cost you can pay for a Gideon is Jura and then play nothing beyond that point. No Elspeth, no Rishkars, no Garrick, no 5-drop walkers. Uh, Wraths are fine. But in black, instead of ramp, uh, what you can do in the first couple turns of the game is actually just control. And control is good too. You can Thought Seize, Inquisition, Collective Brutality. You can play Liliana in black. But if you're playing Liliana in black, you most likely don't want to play 5-drop walkers because you're going to end up discarding lands and or that Planeswalker itself before even getting the mana to play it. So uh, if you're going to play Liliana, you'd want to go more low to the ground Gideons. But yeah, if you're playing Gideons, you could also play Sorens in black-white. You can play more board wipes. You can play Fatal Push. And uh, you got some other cool sideboard options. You can probably have more consistent sideboard options. Uh, for today's uh, sideboard, we didn't really prepare for combo. We more prepared for control and Tron and like affinity and stuff like that. Uh, because it was, it's either one or the other. The sideboard can only do so much. And usually in a green-white dirtily deck like this, I would normally prepare for combo full on. Just like play a set of Damping Sphere. Just make sure you can beat Storm. And uh, we went up against Storm right there. It wasn't really Storm Mills Phoenix, but they acted like Storm. Being able to chain off a million spells in a Pyromancer Ascension. Um, so yeah, that'll do it. Uh, ended up with only only one win. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about this deck. What would you change about it? Uh, what color combination would you play it in? Perhaps blue-white, perhaps red-white. And uh, let me know what deck you want to see for a future gameplay video. I take the suggestions in the comments or uh, DM me on social media or email wherever I can see your list and you might just see your deck played on a future Fan Fridays episode. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new for the Jankies the Gameplay every other day. Thank you very much to all my patrons. Go check out social media. Links are down below. And go check out the Twitch if you want to catch one of these uh, gameplay videos live. We currently stream Magic the Gathering gameplay every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And keep in mind, if you wanted to pick up today's deck or some variation of it and also support the channel, you can get the deck from tcgplayer.com by clicking the deck list link down below. We're getting out of here. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.